Squish me look, here we go. Right, we're just gonna have a look uh, using Oracle Virtual Box Manager. Uh, we're gonna build a VM for some SAN based work. We're gonna use OpenFiler uh, to support that, which is a Linux based uh, operating system. -y. So we'll we'll go and get some bits and pieces to help us out with that. So uh, let's go. Googly, open uh, filer, click on downloads. Scroll the wally down, pick a suitable 64 bit variety, hit the old green arrow, watch the bottom left hand side, wait for it to start downloading. If you've done it before, it will tell you so. Here we go, open up the boom, five minutes left, let's pull. Right, he's done, so we have a file downloaded. We're going to sort him out a little bit later on. Um, let's get something built. So back to Oracle. VirtualBox Manager and new. We're going to do open uh, filer. He's Linux by nature. And we're going to go drop down, scroll down, other 64 bit Linux. And next, let's up the memory to 1024. And next, create the virtual box. So I'm using VDI. I know a lot of people use VMDK, particularly those that want to transport. Uh, v VMs uh, between different uh, VM systems such as VMware uh, and Oracle. So next, um, 8 gigs is going to be fine for what we're doing and the name of this is Open Filer which is good as well so we can keep track of him. So this will be an IDE drive. Let's go into Open Filer so click on Settings and Storage we're going to create a new controller. So down to the bottom there, add, add a new controller. It's a SCSI controller. Up to the SCSI controller. And the right hand option there is add a disk. So create a disk, another VDI. Da -da -da. And 20 gigs is the size of it. And we're going to make that SAN 1. There we go. So create away. Create a second one by the magic of maths will probably be SAN number two and give it a reasonable size dup, 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 dup. might be bigger it's up to you there we go two SANs and one IDE and those are the drives we're going to use right let's uh, pull in that file that we downloaded and let's choose a hard disk da, 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 da. well it's an, an ISO isn't it it's a disk image file so the top one will do 2.3 OK to that. That's all for the ready and awaiting. Let's check around some of these other tabs then. General, basic, advanced and a description. Nothing to change. System, uh, we set the memory. Ah, deselect floppy. Da, 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 we can see. Processor, might want to increase that. You can to two, but we'll stick it into one. Acceleration, might be some things to dabble with, but not going to change anything there yet. Pop up the display, pick up the memory, pop to 64 megs is enough. That's a sort of normalist. Although we're going to be using GUI, so that should be fine. Remote display, da -da, nothing to change. Video capture, nothing to change. Storage, we've just done. Audio, as we come down, deselect, don't want audio. Bit of a bit of a joke, carry on. Uh, networks, this is something we need to change. Enable network adapter, but not attached. Adapter 2, enable network adapter and a bridged, or, as I'm going to do, host only adapter to our internal Ethernet. Right, check the advanced tab. Nothing really changed there. I did change this, as you can see, to the 8254OEM. Um, I changed it to that for some performance issues. Deny, I'm promiscuous, and you might need to change the MAC address using the green around circle things but we're not right serial ports leave as is nothing to change there usb leave selected otherwise you just barely aches at you uh, and then shared folders nothing to change and add there so okay we are set up we are ready to rock and roll so hit the start button and away we go we'll drag him into the middle he'll do a bit of breathing exercises after we hit return to do the install. So he's installing on the hard disk drive, we think. Well, not yet, he's just running a script as such, but he will install onto the hard disk drive. Now, he's going to load up a GUI, 
although it's going to do a memory, well, uh, uh, a media test first, but we're not going to let him, we're going to skip that. Uh, waiting to press something. screen ah open file there we go he's breathing around the place right select next uk is the right keyboard and the language yes that's where we speak english we do it rather well the americans are still learning of course right click on next again for automatically partition select yes three times one for each disk one two three there they are happily listed but we're going to deselect them because we don't want to partition those up yet we only want to partition the first of those it's actually going to create three partitions as described here so we're going to have a, a boot uh, we're going to have a root and we're going to have some swap space so we'll leave no more anything else there and just click next right we're not interested in ethernet zero we are interested in ethernet one remember we're sacrificing ethernet zero for the purposes of gns3 if you use it so, not using DHCP, I'm allocating my own IP address, and my own IP address means 209. I have no idea why I chose 209, but that's the value I'm going to use. Okay, to that, let's set up some gateway stuff. Da -da 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 -da. It's interesting that you can now, because the gateway is set, so that's probably also your DNS. So, ho routers and all the rest of it. Right, clicky wiki on London and next and the training uh, training is where we are going with the password it's going to go off and look at dependencies and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. let's see if it's ready to rock and roll it is, so hit next <gasps> and wait six minutes, but we're not, we're going to pause right, it's ready to rock and roll, so let's reboot and let it do it shenanigans and get back up and ready. Zippity dip, rebooting system. Here we go, looking good. And press return. It's a normal thing to get it going. And we should have a nice dandy. Right, so it brings up Ethernet 1 rather than Ethernet 0 because remember as we set it up in uh, VirtualBox's uh, manager that's what we asked it to do not use Ethernet 0 because that's reserved for GNS3 in the future synchronizing with time server this usually takes a while so we're going to pause right it should be nearly finished now and ready to go here we go and we're up so we can see towards the bottom of the screen it's given us HTTPS and our IP address and port number 446. If we want to log on, we can. I uh, remember, of course, to click in the window first. And training. We're in. We can uh, check to see if uh, the interface looks good with the IF config, of course, remember. Uh, that looks okay, so to speak. Okay, I can see the IP address is in there, so it's taken the config that I gave it. All right, so let's just uh, control, so right side of the keyboard control gets you out of your VM and you can minimize that screen. Let's bring up instead uh, a good old command window and let's see if we can indeed ping our open filer server. And the answer to the question, of course, is no, we can't. It's destination host unreachable. So we need to do some further investigation. Let's have a look at the local config. Remember how this has been established. If you if you've bridged this to your Ethernet adapter, your wireless adapter, you won't see this. You're probably hunky dory. But what I did, if you remember, was I actually bridged this to my virtual host only adapter, and that has a different IP address. Look, 192.168.56.1 compared to the address that I have up here of 192.168.1.98. So they're indifferent subnets, so obviously they can not see each other. So let's just minimize that for a moment. Let's go back to the virtual box. What we're going to do here is through file and preferences, click on network, click on host only networks and the adapter, click on the screwdriver to the right hand side, 
and you'll see that the address is in that subnet. So if we change it to the 1.0, so 192.168.1 something, it will be in the same subnet as the laptop and it will be in the same subnet as the open file server. So they should well be able to see each other. So OK to that, OK to that. Wait for the uh, shield to appear at the bottom, click on that and yes, that configuration has changed. Let's open up. Let's just expand this a little bit as well, just for good measure. And let's do repeat. So up arrow, repeat the IP config command. And we can now see that the IP address for the host only network has now changed. So if we repeat the ping, away it goes and we have a response. So good is that. So we can minimize those out of the way and bring back Chrome. If we do a HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.209 colon 446 and hit the return, we are presented with this. You get this on Firefox as well, so don't worry. It's because the certificate's not being trusted, being locally generated as such. So proceed anyway, and you'll get the logon. The logon is open filer, so that's the username all in lowercase, and the password is password, all in lowercase. So both in lowercase, so that's open filer and password. Log in, and you're presented with the first login screen, which gives you your, your status. So you can see this, looking across the top, we have status, system, volumes, quota, shares, services, and accounts. And whichever one of those you select, your there are menus on the right hand side will change to reflect the fact that you're in a different area. So let's look at the information on this page. We have system vitals uh, on the our left hand side, uh, bottom left, as we can see, we have network usage. Well, not a great deal at the moment, but that will improve. Uh, in the right hand side, or the middle if you prefer, going all the way down, is uh, some information about the CPUs the PCI devices, the IDE and SCSI with nothing on USB. Uh, we will go back to our SCSI devices later, of course. Then memory usage and mounted file system. So a mounted file system, remember, a boot, a root, and a sensory hour swap is uh, what's being utilized at the bottom, or not, as the case may be, as most of it seems to be free. Um, we can see across the top, then, we've got a variety of systems, volumes, quota, shares, and services I mentioned before, and it is really systems I want to go to first. Uh, we've got our network configuration, which really we've established already. Uh, network interface configuration, Ethernet zero, nothing. That's going to be used by GNS3, if I want to put it in a GNS3 environment. So I've made it ready. So we're only using Ethernet one for connectivity purposes. Um, and that's got our IP address of 192.168.1.209, which is part of the 192.168.1.0 network. So we're going to add that in at the network access control configuration down here, the NAC stuff. So I'm going to do an iSCSI. Well, I must have called it that before. I'm going to give it a network address of 192.168.10. Must have done that before. And I'm going to select an appropriate mask. And the appropriate mask in this case is 255.255.255. .255 .255. Zero. Share or UPS? It's share. Click on update. Scroll down. And we should see a line of text has now appeared. And the line of text is here with the ice, because as we named it, and the network, uh, and it's an appropriate mask. So that's the first bit. Now what I would like to do is whiz along to services. And on the services button, what, or page, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure that the iSCSI target is in fact enabled, where at the moment it is disabled. So modification is to enable it. So click on the enable button. Oh, the underlined bit of enable. Not really a button, is it? And there it is, it's enabled. So job is a good one. We're going to back and do some work on volumes in, in another video, and particularly the, we're going to modify the behavior of these block devices. We have three of them, remember. We have our uh, HDA device, which is the IDE device, in fact, which is the, where the open file operating system resides with its three partitions. So let's have a look, three partitions. Indeed, there they are. Yes, root, boot, and swap. So those are, those are fully loaded and ready to rock and roll because that's where OpenFiler is currently running. And then we can see there's nothing yet on either SDA 
underscore stb. So as a result, we need to come back and create something iSCSI style on those, which is exactly what we're going to do. But not in this video. You will have to come back and have another look.